Hello, you beautiful people. My name is Matt, and I made it my mission to casually walk all the way through Tyria. What do I want to achieve with this? Well, four reasons, actually. Reason one is that it simply sounded fun in my head. Reason two is that I want to take the time it takes you to walk from one side to the other to get an idea of the scale of Tyria. How big would it be in real life? The third reason is this is a channel about world building and design, so this is a perfect opportunity for me to comment on everything in the game, basically. And actually, I want to start right here because look at this artwork. And last reason, I want to show off my Mesmer because I'm, I'm so in love with this character. All right, so less talking, more doing. Let's do this. I'm gonna start in the very east of the map, and I think this is the most eastern point I can choose. I'm just gonna start right here at this waypoint, and I will start casually walking just in time, actually, for this. Um, yeah, let's 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 go. Yeah, right in time for the epic music to set in. So yeah, we are on our way through Tyria. I enabled auto walk, of course. And we're just gonna have a look around because one thing with this game uh, and one thing that always kind of bothered me this kind of camera does not really support looking very far i mean like this because we're walking downhill yeah it works but imagine we were going uphill i can't i can't really see into the distance look at that what is that up there that, that looks great i've never seen that before because i'm kind of always looking at the ground and that is something that always bothered me with guild wars anyway that's a little rent out of the way. Um, and that's also the reason I'm gonna zoom in a little more. Also because I want to show off my awesome character. And my little friend there. It's my baby. I want to believe that's what Silvaris look like when they come out of the out of the blossom, I guess. It's a little baby baby Silvari. In my video about the map in Guild Wars, I actually said that this region looks like it's in perpetual autumn. I think what the devs had in mind with this is that it should look like it's impacted by the searing and uh, the thing Edelburn did. This. <laughs> I'm not sure if this impacts my walking speed. Let's let's uh, throw this away. Hey there. So yeah, that's another thing. The dragons. I like. I really like the dragons. Their design is good. They're really big, having this power struggle. They, they actually have an agenda. They're, they're not just dragons for the sake of being dragons. They're not just there so we can have dragons in the game, but they're actually part of the world. So that's good writing right there. Okay, so this is where this big dragon, uh, Krak Torik, just flew over the world and it left the scar. So they basically get an idea of the power of this guy. What I really don't like about this, this kind of um, power scale, like this uh, world changing magic, is that when you actually fight these bosses, um, dragons and Joko and whatever, they really don't feel that strong. They don't feel like they would, they could divert a whole river like Joko did. They don't feel like they could like change the whole world like this. Like, I think they could have uh, thought about this a little more and maybe have the adventures not be as big of a scale. And the writers of Guild Wars actually know how to make it work. It's been done in the fight with Saitan, where you were still the hero and you played a big role. But ultimately, a fleet of airships was needed to bring this guy down, not just one single person. Also, you were facing Krakatoric at one point in the story, spoilers, and um, he didn't just, he couldn't just brand you and that's... Like, why? Why can't he just brand you but he can brand all of these people? What if the dragon just flew over over me why why doesn't he why isn't he changing me into some kind of feral creature is it because we got magic is it because we got, were good at magic we're stronger than him that's like what's the reasoning behind this that's what i'm asking myself the simple truth is that we have plot armor we're needed in the story so we can't be branded i got to do some clones i'm healing Yeah, this is gonna be really fun uh, in Maguma jungle and stuff. Maybe I should actually use my interface. Yeah, that's probably for the better, so I can I can actually see what I'm doing. Also, I think I normally used an, a different healing skill. I'm not sure. 
I really like the concept of mantras. Basically speaking, uh, casting a spell by, by speaking it over and over in your head. So it stays active and then you can release it at any point. Also looking at these buildings um, from the char. I really don't like that the char are um, that much advanced in technology. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. But oh well, that's a, that's a choice. Uh, I also said in my map analysis that it could work and therefore I don't want to criticize it that much. Um, but I would have made a different choice. Oh boy, this is gonna take me forever. What am I doing with my life? What's going on here? Five warthogs and three rabbits? That's always one thing that bugged me a little with MMOs in general. There are way too many things running around. I get it, it's game and you need those things so you can farm them basically. But is it really like, it's not just gonna stand there, it's gonna do its thing in, in the forest and have its lair and stuff. That would have been a way cooler option. So there we go, that was our first region. Okay, so normally we are now in uh, char territory. We were before, but um, there would normally be a quest here. One of the hearts that you can do. You could revive this guy and kill these things and stuff. And this is one of my pet peeves with this game. I really, really don't like that there are no quests, but the, the hearts everywhere. It really, really feels like there's nothing going on here. Like, because who, who cares? Who cares about the hearts, right? You just basically run around, you click things, and when you click things, then a little meter goes up, and that's it. To me, it really never felt like I was actually doing something that is related to the story, even though they put in so much love and so much effort and so much world building in all of this, that you will never see if you just run around and never go to the hard guys and talk to them and read it all. And that's a shame to me, really. I guess in making it all optional, you want to save the players who only want to play a game and don't really care about any story-related things. Uh, you want to save those guys the skipping of all the context. But the other way around, I think it hurts the story because the players who are actually interested in the game, they don't experience the story as much because it's very, very easy to get in the habit of just running around and doing the hearts. But later on in the game, I really stopped caring about the story and I think that's a shame because there's a lot of great stuff here. Um, I'm gonna try and dodge this veteran uh, scale. Is it just me or is Scale a very uncreative name? I, feel furious. I love Mesmer, it's my favorite class by far. There's so much going on when you when you fight. I'm thinking right now about this wall uh, that you see back there. Could it really stand like this? Um, this one part? Really, uh, it looks like it would topple over to me. These char settlements are already, already commented on. I don't... I don't like it all. Also, the amount of iron they're using is just insane. So I really don't see how they would and where they would get so much iron. But it's okay. I mean, this is this is a fantasy world and it's fairly high fantasy. Can we also talk about this sound design for a second? Listen to my steps. Every step is kind of different a little bit. Like there, there's a lot of work that went, that went into this with all the voice acting and stuff. One thing that's a little weird to me is the, like all, all these dead people here. I can just go to them and revive them. It's a good mechanic gameplay wise, but um, those guys look fairly dead to me. Would have been cool if they were just like sitting there being injured or stuff like that and not actually lying around dead. Reviving the dead, by the way, is, is another pet peeve of mine. That's one trope I absolutely hate because imagine the repercussions of having magic that's able to revive people. There would be no more death. If you're rich enough and you could afford being revived all the time, you just wouldn't die. And what would happen? Like, how does it work? Would you come back as a zombie, basically? And if not, 
you would get restored? Would you get renewed too? What if you die of natural causes? Like all of these questions. Or like this meme I saw lately. What if you use a revive spell on your leather jacket? Would a cow form around it? That's just stuff I am, I'm not sure anyone ever thinks about. And um, in my opinion, if you, if you make some fantasy universe, you want it to be believable and cool. Think about your magic. I love these guys. This is such great world building right here. So this is a, a statue of Balthazar, uh, which is a human god. And now these this like primitive tribe, they they kind of know it's some kind of god and they call it Badazar. They, they don't understand what what this is about, um, but they still uh, they still worship him. <laughs> I, I love everything about this. And it's very, very, very easy. When you made something so fun and so great, like this piece of lore right here, it's very easy to build a whole story around that. Okay, uh, since we're just passing one, here's the thing about big spiders. Why are there no spiders that big in the real universe? It's because spiders don't have lungs like we do. So, if you make your fantasy spiders very big, they might actually have lungs instead of what they have in the real world, which I can't remember the term of. But the way insects work in the real world, they breathe through little holes in their torso, basically. It's hard for them to really filter out the oxygen. And in earlier times, when there were dinosaurs and stuff, insects got really, really big because there was a lot more oxygen content in the air. And now that it's depleting, they, they are having a hard time. So insects and spiders and stuff they can't grow larger than like hand sized you might say this uh this is basically <laughs> this guy's like what is he doing what's he up to he an npc <laughs> he's gonna text me in a second <laughs> Come on, dude. I'm, I'm recording a video. You can't do this to me. Stop it. Well, I guess I got, I guess I got a companion now. Um, so yeah. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah. Um, in the real world, if you want to walk from one place to the other, it's gonna give you some routes that, then that are not all straight. They're gonna, gonna be a lot of detours. So. It's basically like uh, going to Google Maps and finding a um, path for hiking through through a whole country. And that's how I'm going to measure the distance. So it doesn't matter if we're not going in a straight line. Oh, that's a problem. Actually, no, it's not. <laughs> I bet this guy is so confused. Like what I'm doing here. I'm getting I'm getting distracted by this guy, I gotta say. Yeah, you go you go ahead, you clear the way for me. Here's a nice little lantern. I'm very interested on how this lantern works. There's a little cock spinning. I guess there are some kind of uh pipelines going through the earth that are fueling these lanterns with probably gas or something. So that's that's really advanced technology. That only came around in the uh, 1800s, I think, in uh, in the real world. So it really, if you think about it, these chars are almost as technologically advanced as we are, or as we were um, one or two hundred years ago. And then you got the humans who are still living in the Middle Ages, but they got a lot of magic. You got the Norns who are basically tribes. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like that in the real world, right? You got you got all these tribes living in the jungle that are that haven't heard of society basically so it's fine like that but i'm just saying like this all this technology would uh distribute fairly what is that would distribute fairly quickly throughout the world okay i don't know what this spinning saw blade back there is but i really don't like it what's the purpose of it is it doing anything is it is this is this a sawmill? Okay, I'm, I'm I've I've got too interested. I gotta pause the pause the timer. We're gonna look at this. 
Also, look how smooth the running animation is in this game. So yeah, they are cutting lumber here, it seems. At this... So looking at this conveyor belt here, there's really no sense in setting it up like five feet off the ground. What would this achieve other than that you would have to lift every tree five feet off the ground before you can cut it? The whole contraption is kind of weird, although I think this saw blade is not as bad as I thought, because the wood would just drop down from both sides after being cut, I guess. Also, can I just say, look at these chars and then look at these doors. You would think you would think they would build doors a little wider so, so they can actually pass them with their broad shoulders. <laughs> these are like standard-sized human doors. These cutouts actually make a lot of sense, uh, just to save some iron. But it really doesn't seem like they have an iron problem to me. Is that a bed? I think that's a bed. Also made of iron. I mean, one thing... It, does it really make sense? Look at all these trees. They could build everything around here out of wood. Wood is a regrowing resource. If you play it smart and manage it correctly, you can actually replant a whole forest and uh, not pull a human and just destroy the whole planet. Has a huge chimney. I like the chimney. This is cool. All right, let's get back to our tour. Also, these these fences. I haven't even talked about them and haven't even looked at it, at them yet. Why? What does it accomplish? It's like the thing the thing you could use as a cover is a cutout, so you can get shot behind it, and then the thing that is not a cover anymore is solid. So it wouldn't it be the other way around. I don't think this makes a lot of sense. So basically what I'm saying about all everything in the char area, it all, don't get me wrong, it all looks great. Someone did a great job designing this uh, from a visual standpoint, uh, but also no one really thought about anything. You know, what I would really like to see would be an MMO an MMORPG that is really focused on just realism, where you have to do a lot of traveling, a lot of sustaining yourself, and just just experience a world instead of all these minions like sitting close to each other and you just go around giving them a good whack. All MMOs I know are completely centered about, around um, combat, and they have they don't have to be. One game that I like in this regard that could be used as a blueprint basically is Monster Hunter. Like, Monster Hunter does a great job with um, giving importance to everything around the map. You run around and collect stuff, and everything you collect has a value. Like, you, my inventory is constantly full, because everything everything can be used later. So you basically run around the map, and you're happy about everything you find. I would use this as a premise for my game. It would be a lot of... Basically, you, you're, looking for, you're looking for a fight with a big monster, right? And you're traveling there... You can get in one or two fights on the way, but mostly you're you're going there and you're finding stuff on the way and you're happy about everything because you can actually use everything and it's always it will always stay um, impactful and will always stay important uh, to to gather the little things. It's hard to achieve and it has to be uh, you ha you have to think about uh, what you're doing a lot and how to make everything feel like you will still need it. The most obvious thing is food. You don't have to eat in this game, in Guild Wars. You don't have to eat ever. If you had to eat all the time, then sustaining yourself would be one whole part of the game. And I actually think that's... A, like, eating is <laughs> the most crucial part in life. Why not have it in the game? I'm not talking about, like, having to eat every 20 minutes, as in, say, uh, a survival game, for example. But, like, just once a day, give your character some food. That would mean that every day you would have to make a choice between farming for resources to cook or buying yourself some food with money, which maybe you don't want to spend. And by extent, every time you would come across something on the map, like herbs or fruit or whatever, that you could use for cooking and sustaining yourself, you would be happy to find that. Because you actually need it. You need it every day. You need it to play the game. Okay, so looking at the design of all this, um, uh, I don't want to hate on the design of all of this too much, but most of these cogs and stuff are just for decoration and they're actually useless. 
But I really, really like this crane. Look at this. That's great. Imagine some card is coming in and it's got one big char siege weapon loaded or something. And then this crane comes down and picks off the siege weapon and the card can go. <laughs> Excuse me, what? What are these rooftops? Why? Why? I'd like to see all these things to be functional. And most of the time, if you think about the function of everything you're designing, then you will end up with a completely different concept. Not to say that this is bad design, but it's not very logical. And uh, it would look completely different if you, if you had taken into account functionality. See, this is a char door. Th that's what I'm talking about. This is a door for a char. Also, this wall is way better. This is a wall for someone who has way too much iron lying around. Uh, but also think about how would someone try to defend this fort from behind this wall. Normally, if you had a castle wall like that, there would be um, a walkway right behind this, like uh, almost at the same height, so you can duck behind the wall but shoot over it. And it's, it's just not present here. And uh, here, where you could actually shoot from, there's no wall, so you have so you have no defense. Like all these uh, all these defensive structures are not actually um, very well thought out. I'm very sorry if you if you're like if you're a Guild Wars fanboy and I'm completely overanalyzing all of this. Hmm. I mean, I think we identified a weak point here. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so. Char technology isn't for me, really. It's uh, all, Everything is weird here. I promise I'm not gonna hate on <laughs> the rest of Guild Wars as much. Okay, so let's continue our walking trip from where I, um, where I got sidetracked. But I just had to look at that. Look at it. It's, it looks really interesting from a distance. There, the camera angle comes in because normally I would probably walk like this. I wouldn't even see it. Okay, so here we got one of the infamous char cattle ranches where there's a lot of hay stacked even though they don't plant any crops. Uh, these vulture raptors, I really like them. Very likely designs, basically almost what, what a velociraptor would have looked like since we assume that they had feathers. Also one thing... Oh, I hope this doesn't get in my way. Uh, one thing I have to say real quick. The, the the whole battle system designed around the buffs and debuffs, uh, I really like that. That's a great idea. It's, it's very well thought out, in my opinion. What's not very well thought out is like these area effects uh, kind of things. It's a real nice idea that you can shoot through the borders of those and get additional effects out of it. But uh, as you probably know if you play this game, it ends up with everyone just cuddling on the boss and um, spamming some AoE attacks. So uh, it's questionable from a gameplay um, perspective. And I bet they wouldn't have done it if they had foreseen that. The, also, this kettle pulled is <laughs> really funny. That's just a pun. Uh, I, I dig that. Oh, look, a single sunflower. Oh, look, a dandelion. Must be the last one of the season. Okay, so this is an exploded cannon, I guess. How do you sit in these things? Do you even... How do these work? Is there someone underground? How do you get in? Who's controlling these? Makes me angry. Why, why would you not think about who's controlling this and how? These windmills, quote-unquote, uh, that's actually a good idea. I don't know if that would actually work, if the wind would actually funnel through them the way it does, apparently. This is a really, really cool design, just visually. There's some wood in there for some reason. Maybe implying that this can open? I'm not sure. Building a statue out of um, metal. It's pretty metal. It makes a lot of sense. This whole civilization obviously has a lot of metal lying around. So sure, let's, let's use some of it to make a huge statue of someone. All right. Also, keep keep your cities beautiful. Why would you why would you cut down a tree inside the city the city's walls and and not remove the tree stump? Also, this one. If they're in the way, remove them completely. And if they're not in the way, leave them. 
like Charles must have some kind of sense for beauty, right? Like not not all of this is purely functional. They must have some sense of beauty. Look at this elaborate design. This looks great. And there's there's like this cat char thingy. It's a real cat though. Are char looking at cats or big cats like we look at monkeys? It's our ancestry. Anyway, let's keep walking. Oh, tents, tents. We haven't we haven't seen a lot of tents yet. I feel like tents are very interesting. Um, for this culture. First of all, look how great this tent looks. Oh my god, look at how great this tent looks. It's even got the little net to catch some leaves and stuff. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great if all char technology or all char buildings would look like that? Isn't that way more likely if they were just tribal nation before and then they get a lot of iron to basically improve on their tribal stuff and make more iron for it? That's a great design. I love that. From a world building perspective as well as from a design perspective. Another cattle ranch. I really do like worm enemies like that. And I wish they were possible. <laughs> I wish just burrowing through the earth would actually work like that. And uh, I'd love to have them in my universe. But I'm, I'm sticking with realism. So uh, it's not for me. Really cool though. Excuse me sir, you're in my way. One thing I haven't commented on are the names. Uh, that's a cow, that's a bad example. Um, but if you look at the char, um, the names are kind of dodgy. And this is actually another pet peeve of mine, it's like fantasy trope, where, oh, hello there. Where people seem to have names that imply who they are, more like a nickname than a last name. What is going on? But like I said, um, most most fantasy universes keep it like that. Especially with dwarven names and stuff. Dwarves are always called like, I don't know, Rage, rage Axe and fo Forge Fire and I don't know. Bad examples probably. Anyway. Stonebiter. Stonebiter isn't too far-fetched for a dwarf, actually. If if you if you got your classic fantasy trope dwarf um, that's living underground and doing a lot of mining, I don't think Rockbiter would be very far-fetched. I wonder what these kind of light light is this a light? I wonder what what this is supposed to be and what it's made out of and what's inside it. Really interesting. It kind of looks a little out of place, if you ask me. Just also just weirdly hanging from the stairway. I also really like how um, the devs or the de designers of this game, I really like how they modeled this area where the snowboarder basically starts. I don't know if that's the right word. Okay, so finally we can see some different architecture. That's really interesting. These windows. First of all, they are way too low. I can just, if, if I want to break out or in for that matter, if I manage to destroy these windows, I, I can easily get out and in. Uh, so these are way too low. They should be way higher up. So one can't just easily get in and out. But apart from that, I think the design looks really neat. Uh, what I don't like is how elaborate this all of this looks. This uh, speaks of someone with way too much money and for a little fort in the mountainside like that, for the defensive structure, that's nothing else than that. I think this is way too much. We don't have stairs here, we have a ramp, that's interesting. So apparently something is supposed to go up here, maybe siege weapons or something like that. It's actually a great idea. This is good. So these uh, these higher parts of the wall, they are really good. Uh, they are exactly the right height. So you can hide behind them from enemy fire. And then you basically peek out, you shoot your shot, get back here, reload and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, this is great. And also imagine someone would try to climb the wall and maybe put a ladder on the wall and uh, climb up the ladder. They would have to jump over this uh, pointy fence, which could be an obstacle for them. So this is also a pretty good idea. I don't mind this at all. Meet Toberfest. Ugh, the Meat Toberfest. <laughs> so stupid. Okay. Um, why are these on the inside, though? I think someone accidentally placed the bridge the wrong way around. 
Look at these chairs. They're really pieced together and I really don't mind that. Because this is an outpost from a lot of different nations. And uh, right now I'm thinking like, this, <laughs> this looks like one of these kids chairs where you can sit a little higher to reach the table and then you get fed by your parents and stuff. Is, is this for Asuri Asurians? Oh, there's a cat here. Hey, cat. I can tell from your expression this is either your first time to see Chargate Haven or your first time to see an Asura. Oh, I'm talking to the Lion God. I was wondering what this cat is all about. What's that for? Is that, is that a torture table or something? It looks very much like someone should be lying on here. Like this is for resting your feet. This is for the head. For the head. But what do you do with the person on this table? What, what is this for? Is this also for Asurans? Are they wearing diapers? Is this for changing Asuran diapers? Alright, this is all cool. I like especially the candle. It looks really cool. And then we got stuff like that. Like th this is one thing. Ugh, why do you have to mix it up that badly? Yeah, not not a fan of the Asurans either. And I'm probably not gonna... I'm not gonna be ranting on Asuran technology a lot. Because this is so far ahead of anything, even from our perspective, from our real world perspective, that it would impact all of the other civilizations. They would all want to employ Asuran technology. And they are with the waypoints and stuff. And uh, portals. So I think there would be a lot more than just this. All right. Let's go to the next area. Which is going to be the Shiver Peak Mountains, and I'm going to show you this in my next video, because otherwise this will be two hours long probably, so thanks for watching, please rate the video, leave a comment, it really helps with the algorithm, and if you want to see the rest of the journey, please subscribe and hit the bell, so you get notified when the video comes out, because I only upload like every two weeks or so. And if you want to change that, you can support me on Patreon, so I can hopefully quit my job someday and do this as a full-time job. I hope to see you next time, until then, stay safe, have a wonderful time. Muffin out.